Pascal was award nine. The Abula Lamont Kata. Um, now up and is Omela Ulucha. Yes, and Apa put at Malema. That Malema up and Tolumel Lucha. Jung of us in Lapu, we are born to win in the Lucha. I see now, Miss Ben. I see because Who <laughs> Amanda, Amanda, pull out nine, Kula, pull out nine, Kula, Kula, EFF, Kula, Mantatel Tuba, the Gulesa, among Amen, Nescribasa, and Dinga Janga Tresa, Dinga Janga Tresa, Indo M. Mumkoka Kapulo, Ape, what nine. And in the Konda, I know Bangabakos of Funeka, I call it Siwa Yenzeka, Abandu Balapa, a toilet to buy us a thing, a toilet to buy us a thing, a cool, Leonardo Funegas, the Minisegu Yokakulu, a Namanzi, Nombane, Nalenga Shoba Tetangayo, a gentleman, the figure and his own to the sailor, a Sizal in New York Bangaba. Ganga Gogo, Amanda, Akoyo, Indoyogo Banga, but the service delivery. Funagi Figa, Gunuban Baguti, Amanda, as now, what to make a guni, who goes as long as his Indozi and Magalente, the Sifunangayo, I to make a upper guni nam, Ugubanga Bandens, Gabus, and to make a guni, and Funaga Utatan Tua, Nugulogi. Mposika kulu kuni nonge jangu bani pumele ni pumele na mbuni tibe nu uza umame nu munga melu etu ba uza uti ni namsa nje e yonge gindo iko megege guye mposite amanda awe tu e comrades iko keli zeff zikona apa. The regional leadership, the regional chairperson, Uteba Ukona, Ushala Werichi, Nukolani Chet Ukona, Uong Karabez, Nopala Werichi, Nukona, Ingo Kelly, Zepon, the Legion of Colony, Zikona, Pam Goba, Sinigalu National Chair, President. It is true that Abandu Balapa, Abana's toilet, Abandu Basel Kushindo, the President. Abanasi Tueles, Abanasi Masa Petalan President, Masi Tuma Wella Tafur Bonaparte, Abanasi Tuma Wella President, Maya Wella Tafur Bonaparte, Maris Kutran Gula President, Tuma Nam Telum Gelu Namanzi, Umbane, Itoilet, Wadabandu, Alapamasha, Tu, Tangi Bonaparte National Chair. Manta, Manta, Viva EFF, Viva, Viva EFF, Viva, Panti go huapili zo Panti, Panti go huapili zo Panti, Panti linges di masom dom nyama Pambi, Pambi linges di masom dom nyama Pambi, forward to economic freedom in our lifetime, forward. Economic freedom 
in our lifetime forward. Zela Mongameli, Low Teta Yogu National Jefferson, EFF, Osa, Lua Eastern Cape, Osa, Lua Western Cape. God, one go, Kulika Shaloba, Nasitalele, Abantu Be, Tukbana, Yindoni, Eza, Ubange, Lubange, 29, Game, Nivo, Te, Nizen, Nizen, Aziz, Kalazo, Zen, Waku, Masmame, Leo Mongameli, Ukuba, Uza, Status, Begenda, Oni, Siza, Ukalu, Mongameli, Azenga, Pam, Viva, 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 to victory, forward, forward to victory, forward. Thank you very much, National Chairperson, our Provincial Chair, Regional Chair, our Ward Councillor, Ward 9. We are very happy to be here, and I came because you voted for an EFF Ward Councillor. It has never happened in the Western Cape. It happened here for the first time where people prove that the EFF exists in Western Cape. I'm not shocked by the things you are saying because I know where DA governs, it doesn't look after black people. You, when you go to the white suburbs, you will never find them without toilet. But when you go to black people's areas, they don't have toilets. So we had the issue of the toilets, and we're going to make sure that our councillor lead that struggle in the municipality, so that even if they don't provide permanent toilets for now, they must provide an intervention while we are waiting for a permanent solution because it's important that our people have got a place where they can go, not the field, not in a risky area, but in a safe environment. Yes. Councillor, when we were campaigning, we said we are going to fight for water in what nine? and said our people in Ward 9 do not have water. We are not running Saldana municipality, but you are a councillor. So we have to make some temporary intervention because a councillor of the EFF must not be an elite. A councillor of the EFF must be the way you are. Be so grounded, be so disciplined, and serve your own people. That's why in the EFF we say, councillors must buy buckets. They must not buy a German machines without a buggy. So even if he buys BM or Benz, he must have a buggy. Why? Because your job started the day you were elected. You were supposed to go to the shacks of old people who don't have water and take their buckets and go and collect water on their behalf and deliver to old people who can't travel long distance. We don't have power in Saldana, but you have power of a party. You must be seen to, doing, to be doing something. Because even when these people know that there's very little that you can do but you are making the means to make sure that the vulnerable, the disabled, old gogos are helped to go and fetch water on their behalf. So when I came, the Treasurer General of the EFF said, we will donate three bowls as a means of temporary intervention. So, you must choose where these three poles will be 
and make sure that they are safe wherever they are. Even if you put them inside the yard of people, it's okay. As long as there is access to water as an immediate temporary intervention while we are fighting in the council to have a clean water in each and every tap because no one must queue for water. A human being must have a flushing toilet. If you are a human being and you don't have a flushing toilet, you must know that the ANC violated your rights for the past 30 years. Only animals must see it after putting it down. A human being must never see what was left when you stand up. You must flush so that it disappears immediately. Now that you don't have toilet, you still put it down, you see it. You must know they are treating you like animals. And on the 29th of May, you must show them that they never respected you, they never valued you. We want jobs for young people in the firms, also in the municipality. Not these jobs that are given to politically connected people. If you're not a DA member, you don't get a job in the municipality. If you are not an ANC member, you don't get a job in a municipality. We want you to get a job in a municipality because you have a South African ID and you qualify for the job, not because anyone did you any favor. In the EFF, no councillor will sleep with women in exchange for jobs like the ANC is doing. They want sex before they give you a job. So we want you, the leaders of the EFF, to go into the firms and say, in what nine there are a lot of young people who are unemployed and we want you to employ them so that we fight poverty in this ward of the EFF. The EFF councillor must always be amongst the poor. When you are elected the councillor of the EFF, if you leave this ward nine and go and stay in town, you must resign with immediate effect because a councillor must live amongst his or her own people. I hope after you are elected and you are going to do it before I leave here, your cell number must be known by everyone here. Your address must be known by everyone here. So that when people have got problems, they can walk into your home and talk to you. Those who have phones, they can phone you and say, I've got a problem. Please, councillor, come and help us. We are not troubling you. You chose this thing. You came to our houses and provoked us. And we voted for you. Therefore, it's our turn now to come to your house. You came to our houses. We didn't chase you away during door to door. We're now coming to you to say to you, these are our problems. There must not be a poor person who dies in this area and they are unable to bury that person and the EFF is no way to help poor people bury their loved ones. The EFF must always be there when a person dies because as a counselor you have a duty to know all the activities here. When there is a funeral you must know when there is a baby shower, you must know. When there is a wedding, you must know. And over Because it's your duty as a counselor to be with your people. We don't want to see you only during elections. Even after elections, 
we want to have an intimate relationship with our country. Fighters, there is a lot of corruption because of the DA that steals money in Saldana municipality and they don't get punished. Why? Because they are white people. When you are white and corrupt, it's not called corruption. It's called financial mismanagement. But when you are a black person, they say you are corrupt. So the corruption of Saldana, it's a white corruption and we must call it what it is. It is a TA corruption which we must fight through our own what council. Fighters, let's make sure that on the 29th of May, we repeat what we have done here in what nine. We must say through our votes, we want a 24-hour clinic. Utetilo Mama and said the clinic is there's no clinic in this world. The EFF everywhere in South Africa says there must be a clinic in each and every world. And that clinic must have an ambulance. Because what is a clinic without an ambulance? When you are sick at home. You can't walk to the clinic. The ambulance must come and fetch you. And you know what is even worrisome and painful is that where there are clinics, they close at four o'clock. It's like they say to you, you must be sick very fast before four. If you make a mistake of being sick after four, you won't have anywhere to go to. But imagine a pregnant woman. She doesn't know when she's going to give birth. And she goes to a clinic at half past four. She's at the gate. They close the gate. And she gives birth at the gate. And the child dies at the gate. Because we are led by fools who don't respect life and respect human beings. I'm not telling you a story. It happened in Spokuni, in Limpopo, where a woman went to a clinic. When she arrived, they just closed the gate. She gave birth and the child died. And we are helping her to sue government. That if you had opened this clinic, that child was going to be alive. So, the issue of clinics in each and every ward operating 24 hours. I'm happy Umama raised it because the people must know that we are not just talking. This is what our people want because clinic is primary health. You know, once you have a clinic, we are going to make sure that a lot of people live for long. There is a, an illness called breast cancer. When you hear some lump in a breast and you go to a hospital and you find a long queue, all right, this is not a big problem, let me go home. Then you go home, it becomes a big problem. When you go back, they say this is breast cancer stage four. But if you had a clinic, you just make a turn, they test you, they detect it much more early and they are able to treat it and save life. When you say you want 24 hour clinics, you are not asking for luxury. You are asking for the protection of our people from curable diseases because of primary health care. We want these children to go to school free of charge. Because the AAC in 1994 said free education. Today they don't know what they promised us 30 years ago. Free education does not mean school fees. 
Because people think that when you say don't pay school fees, that means free. It's not free. Education is not school fees. That's why it's called education and not school fees. They say to you, don't pay school fees because you are poor. Then they say, the same day, after admitting you, you must go and buy school uniform. When do you become poor? When do you become rich? During school fees, you are poor. During uniform, you are rich. You must buy it. Education goes with textbooks. They must be free of charge. There must be a proper feeding scheme in each and every school. And children must not eat only during break. They must eat even after school so that they don't go and look for food in other places. Because once you don't give these children food and they go home after school, there is no food and the parents are still waking. That's why these girl children go to sugar daddies because they want food to survive. So you want to earn sugar daddies and teenage pregnancy support our children so that they can become children. We want children to be children. That's why in the EFF we are saying child grant must be doubled and we must pay more than 1,000 rand because we don't want these children to go hungry and we don't want the children of the poor of the poorest to go hungry and when I say we are going to give you 1,000 plus for child support they say you want these people to make children I say to them let them make children there is no problem with making children as a nation we have a duty to multiply if you don't multiply as a nation you will be undermined by your enemies look at us here in south africa we've got minerals but we are poor why because we're a small nation china doesn't have minerals but they are rich because they've got the quota of the world population in China. So the size matters when it comes to the revolution. So don't tell me that a person is poor and therefore must not make children. I was born poor myself to a poor domestic worker. If my mother did not give birth to me, my family will not be where they are today. Where you, you are saying, let this poor woman not be pregnant because she's poor. What if that child is the one who's going to change the life of that particular family like we did in our own families? You must tell them, when they say to you, don't make children, you are poor. Who's going to support these children? Tell them their father Malema will support them as a president of South Africa. Because we're not going to allow our children to become adults when they are young. Because when you are a child and there is no food at home, when you leave school, it means you must have a peace job. It means you must go around begging. That is not a job of a child. A child must be a child. Go home, do homework, go and play, and then come back because tomorrow is a school day. You must never be obsessed with where am I going to get food as a child. We want social grant of Abu Gogo to be more than 4,000 rand because Abu Koko, Abu Kool, they are the ones who are running these families. Without these Gogos here, 
we will all be in trouble. Because when you give them money, they don't go and play cards with the money. They don't play games with the money. They buy a bag of maize meal and put it behind the door. And they feed every African child who comes into that family. If it was not this cocos, this poverty that I can touch in what nine, it was going to be worse. But our cocos are trying everything in their power to make sure that we've got something to eat even when they've got nothing. That's why we must give them more money. They say, where will the money come from? I always answer them and say, we are going to remove positions of deputy ministers. What is a deputy minister? What is a job of a deputy minister? The most educated amongst you here don't even know these deputy ministers. Yet, they get paid millions and they've got a house in Cape Town and they get a house in Pretoria. They've got a, a cars in Pretoria, cars in Cape Town. They've got staff members in Pretoria. They've got staff members here. We buy them food in Pretoria and even in Cape Town. But no one can explain what is the job of this people. Because Deputy Minister of Education when the Minister of Education is not around, he is not allowed to sit in cabinet because they are not members of cabinet. They, those are just positions created for ANC people just to please each other with our money. That's why we say we remove them. We save a lot of money and we take it to Abu Gogo because they deserve this particular money. Yes, yes. Today, you know what is painful is that a doctor goes to school for seven years. And after going to school for seven years, a doctor in Cape Town is still marching for a job. There will never be a situation where you can say, we have enough doctors. We will never have enough doctors. Even if we have enough doctors, we can give each street a doctor to look after because that's primary health. So, to say to people they must go to school for seven years only to come back and not have a job, that must be a sin which government must never commit. Every doctor who finishes school must go straight to a clinic or a hospital because their positions are there. The corrupt must create space for our doctors in the hospital. And why do you say this is an unemployed graduate? How can unemployment and graduate be in one sentence? You are either unemployed because you are not a graduate or you are a graduate. That's why we want to, before you finish your courses at TVET, to go and universities, to go and do practicals six months before you finish. Why? We want you to see the, your bosses, your potential bosses. They must see their potential worker you also get practical experience. And when you finish, no one can say you don't have experience. Already when you go back to school to finish, your boss will be saying to you, where well, now when you graduate, your position is already here because they saw your good hands and how hardworking you are. They don't have to see you for the first time through a CV. They had an immediate first experience with all of you. So we want every graduate to get a job. And if they don't get a job, they must get a stipend. 
they must be paid for going to school because education must pay how do you say to us when we are young until we grow up you say education pays education pays we go to school we get education we come back we have no jobs and we are poor education must pay it must pay through a job it must pay through economic opportunity or government must give you a stipend if they can't give you a job they say where will the money come from i say but you are already giving them money you are giving them 370 because this corrupt ramapos with a big nose he went he added now he added now 20 rand because they want to buy your phones they say they are increasing 350 with 20 rand to make it 370 because they think they can bribe you i say to them but you are already giving them money because you say all those who are unemployed and have got no means you will give them 370 but why do you give them the same amount when they don't have the same qualifications we must be given money according to our qualifications so that we encourage children who come after you to go to school because they will know education pays now you say to your child go to school get a degree and then she says to you mama why must i get degree because you've got a degree and uncle has got no metric but both of you are getting 370 what is the point i won't go to school that's why we are saying we'll give them free education give them jobs in the absence of jobs we must give them a stipend because we want to make education fashionable here in what nine we said we are going to fight for bursaries counselor get our children bursaries make sure they go to the best universities when they arrive there they must join the student command which will make sure that they are well received in all the tibet colleges so i am here to say to you today our appointment with you did not end the day when you elected the EFF. That day was the beginning of a journey which is going to change the lives of our people in what nine. We are going to make this place a better place. We must show the whole of Western Cape and the whole of South Africa what an EFF government can do. It must start here in what nine and every time chairperson of the province when you get opportunities send them to what nine so that others can learn through what nine that when you vote for EFF you vote for a caring government and a caring government is not a government of luxury I said to you, do the most simple things. These people will love you forever. Sometimes our people don't, they know you have no power. They just want you to come and listen to them. Hear their cries so that when you leave, your consciousness is sharpened. So we say to what nine in Saldana, this is a home of the EFF and we are going to make sure that this place becomes a better place. It must have proper roads, it must have electricity in each and every shack. There must be water and there must be jobs for our people. Once we get those right, these people on the 29th of May, they are just going to walk in there and say we are looking for our party which cares 
about black people. So I'm here just to say to you, thank you. You have made us people. We were not people before you voted for us. We came here to humble ourselves before you and say to you, we are here to serve. We are not arrogant. We are your messengers. Please use us and send us again on the 29th of May because you know when the EFF in, is in parliament, no one sleeps in that parliament. The EFF keeps them awake. They think they can beat us up, throw us outside. When they throw us outside, after beating us in parliament, we remember the people of what nine, Saldana, their pain and their suffering. And we say the pain we felt yesterday is nothing compared to what the people of what nine are feeling. That's why we go back the following day and started where we ended before they beat us. Point of order, honorable speaker. The EFF, the EFF, during the State of the Nation this year, they burned our members and the EFF was not there. Go and look at the pictures of the State of the Nation. Everybody sleeping, including Peggy Tele. The beautiful Peggy Tele. Can you imagine when he's sleeping, how he looks like? That's what happens when there is no EFF in parliament. You want a working parliament, you want an active parliament, you want parliament that holds the executive accountable. Vote for EFF on the 29th of May so that we can keep that parliament busy. That is the job of the EFF. Mapisa Ngakula, the Speaker of Parliament, ate a lot of tribes and she's going to be arrested. Whether she likes it or not, she's going to jail and she's going to be followed by Cyril Ramaphosa because Ramaphosa was found with money in the madras and suffers. What kind of a president keeps money in the mattresses and in the sofas? Yes, put that money all over that big nose. That's why it's like that. And it was not enough to store it in that nose. Then he had to find other corners. He's going to jail. I can tell you now, there was a docket opened against Ramaphosa on Busasa money and that docket was made to disappear by Batoi. We will not rest until Ramaphosa goes to jail. You don't have electricity today because of corruption of Ramaphosa and the ANC that destroyed ESCOM. Today there is no ESCOM. That's why we are all suffering. Today there is no transnet, which used to create jobs. That's why we are suffering. Everything became worse under Ramaphosa. So the chairperson of the province lead these people on the 29th of May to vote for freedom. What nine said to Western Cape, it's nice to stay in a liberated zone. This is a liberated zone, and the whole of Western Cape will be a liberated zone because they are going to follow in your footsteps. That's why yesterday we were in Google. It was so packed because the people of Western Cape were saying yesterday we want change like it happened in what nine. They knew that if what nine can do it, Bukule too can do it. The whole of Western Cape can do it 
and that's why we want to take the land. Why? We don't want you to stay like this. Where you are crammed as if you are sardines. We want you to have your own piece of land. Enough so that you can even build your own houses when you get jobs from the EFF government. So we thank you for coming. The chairperson of the province said, you must not leave, he's got other things for you, which you will announce as our way of saying thank you very much for coming today and for voting for the EFF. Do not worry about my voice. I've been all over South Africa speaking. Saturday I was in Kimberley. Thursday I was in East London. Yesterday I was in Cooks, today I'm in Saldana. So this borrowed voice is now selling me out. But I'm happy it didn't die before I finish. Thank you very much. Freedom is coming on the 29th of May. Manja! Manja! FIFA! EFF FIFA! Tata! EFF Tata! I cool it, EFF Saldan. I cool it. I cool it, EFF What Nine. I cool it. I cool it, EFF Western Cape. I cool it. I cool it. I cool it. I cool it. Thank <laughs> you. 